So now we get to the third topic, Make Sense of Sense, by Hans Jensen. When measuring intervals acoustically, we want to be as precise as possible, and sense the logarithmic unit of measuring allows us to do that. We can develop the ability to perceive pitch relationships. So we begin with octaves. One octave is 1,200 cents and is the only interval that is the same size in all three tuning systems. So that is easy to remember. And in the diagram, you'll see that 1,200 cents is the same for equal temperament, just and Pythagorean. The perfect intervals, if you recall from the harmonic chart, the perfect fifth is two cents greater. The good news here is that it's the same for the just and Pythagorean tuning systems. It will be 702 cents for both of those. The perfect fourth is the opposite, two cents smaller. In equal temperament, there are five semitones in a perfect fourth and that's where we get 500 cents. In the just and Pythagorean, we subtract two cents from that and we get 498 cents. Major thirds, if you recall, is the big one. Just intonation, the major third is smaller, 386 cents. We subtract it from 400, which is equal tempered, so 400 minus those 14 cents gives us the just 386 cents. Pythagorean, which we haven't yet discussed, is greater at 408 cents. Certain intervals require adjustments to sound harmonious, but how are you going to find them? One needs to be able to hear the difference. So in order to find a just major third, we rely heavily on the natural harmonics. We're going to use the fifth partials of the open strings, which is two octaves plus a major third above the fundamental string to find the pitch. So what we do in the exercises in cello mind is to use the harmonic as a reference and then find the exact pitch with the solid note. It will be physically lower. harmonics to the solid note. In cello mind, we refer this as vertical pitch memory. It's not quite as easy to do as it seems in these audio, but it is very instrumental in helping you perceive the pitch difference of minus 14 cents. So we have another comparison chart. If you look at the very bottom, the major third, is made up of four semitones in equal temperament, so that's 400 cents, but in just, we subtract minus 14 cents to get 386. Pythagorean intonation is quite different. All the pitches in this system relate to each other by way of perfect fifths and remain as a fixed system similar to equal temperament. So what that means is the Pythagorean perfect fifths or the pure perfect fifths are going to be slightly bigger than on the piano. Finding the Pythagorean major third is quite different. We stack 
perfect fists on top of each other. And then move that pitch down to a lower octave so then we can go back and stack again. So we use that open C string as a control. So the major third of the C is E. So unlike just intonation, we are actually using our open strings as 702 cent perfect fifths. When we reach the E, we then match that two octaves below so that we can play it against the open C. The math behind this can help you better understand the pitch difference. So for Pythagorean perfect fifths, which are 702 cents, times four equals 2808 cents. These four perfect fifths take up a two octave range, which is 1200 cents times two, you get 2400 cents. If we subtract those two sums, we are left with a Pythagorean major third. 2808 minus 2400 gives us 408 cents. So this is the Pythagorean major third, which is quite big compared to the just major third. Here's another diagram to help you understand where these notes are slightly placed in relation to equal temperament. So at the bottom of the diagram, you'll find equal temperament as the control. So an open C in all three systems is the same. We are going to find that major third. An equal temperament is 400 cents. But as you can see in the second staff line, it's to the left of the dotted line because that E is slightly flat. It's a smaller distance from the open C. The Pythagorean on the top staff line is larger. That E is on the right side of the dotted line, indicating a 408 cent major third. This does influence where the perfect fourth lies. So the perfect fourth in Justin Pythagorean is exactly the same two cents smaller than equal temperament. But as you can see, the distance between the major third and perfect fourths are pretty big. In Pythagorean, it's a 90 cent semitone. In the just, it's quite large. It's a 112 cent semitone. Whereas in equal temperament on the bottom is your standard 100 cent semitone. This leads us to commas. This is how string players can jump from one system to another. With the scent variations between the three intonation systems, it is widely possible to learn how to seamlessly implement an interchange from one intonation system to the next if you know how to use the commas. So we'll begin with the Pythagorean pitches. There are 24 enharmonic Pythagorean pitches. String players, we need to know all 24 different pitches in order to play all the major and minor scales. Enharmonic pitches should not sound the same, although they do on the keyboard. In equal temperament, they do sound the same. The question is, can we find the enharmonic pitches and can we hear the difference? Well, let's do our last bit of math. Equal tempered perfect fifths. There are 12 equal tempered fifths. So 700 cents times 12 gives us 8,400 cents. 12 equal tempered fifths. You will hit all the half steps. And it covers seven octaves when you jump in perfect fifths. So 1,200 cents times seven gives us 8,400 cents. So the math looks very clean. 
on that equal tempered chart. But then we go to the Pythagorean perfect fifths, and we have 702 cents, which is going to ruin the math. So you have 702 Pythagorean perfect fifths times 12. You're going to come up with 84.24 cents. It still is going to cover the range of seven octaves. So 1,200 times seven, you're still going to get 8,400. But that doesn't equal each other. We are in now of excess of 24 cents. What are we going to do with these 24 cents? back to an audio where we showcase a B sharp where the arrow is. The 24 cent difference is crucial to Pythagorean and harmonic notes because it is the exact pitch difference between each enharmonic note. So in this sample, that B sharp needs to be placed 24 cents higher than for the cello, the open C. You cannot really play an open C there because you will sound very flat. Let's listen to this one again. This 24 cent difference between all enharmonic keys is known as the Pythagorean comma. We have a really fantastic chart here, the spiral of fifths. Both notes on each spiral's arm is the enharmonic note. So if you start at C and you jump 12 fifths going around that spiral, you will land on B sharp. But that B sharp is 24 cents higher than the C. That is where the comma, the Pythagorean comma exists. It exists between each of those notes on every part of the spiral's arm. Now we're going to have two cellists play together the series of 12 perfect fifths. And when they land on the final perfect fifths, you can then hear the difference between a B sharp and a C. I bring to you Hans Jorgen Jensen, lead author of Cello Mind. Hello, I'm Hans Jensen. I would like to talk about the Pythagorean comma. We have here Chilis Luis Fernando in Torelli and Tihao He, and they will help us explore this topic. When talking or discussing this with people, I'm often asked, why do we need to know about the Pythagorean comma? It is helpful to know about the Pythagorean comma because it's the interval difference between all the inharmonic keys. The typical classical example, we compare going up or stacking 12 perfect fifths with stacking seven octaves. And when we get to the top of the perfect fifth, we have an interval that's a little bit larger and the intervals don't line up. But I think it would be easy if we took a few diagrams from Cello Mind and tried to explain that. So let's look first here at the first diagram. The first diagram shows very clearly that 12 equal tempered fifths are the same as seven octaves. So now looking at this sample, you can see we start on G flat and we go up 12 fifths and we end up on F sharp. Of course on the piano a G flat and an F sharp is the same pitch. So that's very clear that that is exactly the same with 12 equal tempered fifths as seven octaves. Now if we turn the page and go to page 56, we can see very clearly here three rows. The first row shows the equal tempered fifths. And an equal tempered fifth is seven half steps, and a half step is 100 cents, so each of those are 700 cents. And when you compare 12 equal tempered fifths 
with seven octaves, you get exactly the same intervallic distance. But when you look at the third row, you can see here that the perfect fifths are two cents sharper or larger than the equal tempered fifths. So when you stack 12 of those, for each fifth you go up, you're going up two cents wider compared to the piano. So 12 times two is 24. So you end up with the B sharp being 24 cents sharper than the C natural. And that's a Pythagorean comma. And that's the thing, that interval is a distance between all the inharmonic keys. I think it would be really interesting if we will have the Chelly show us how to stack these fifths and then automatically the Pythagorean comma shows up. When I saw it the first time, I was experimenting and I got really, really excited because I suddenly realized I found the Pythagorean comma just by going up perfect fifths or down perfect fifths. So let's have see how and Louis show us how to stack those fifths. So please go ahead and show us that. Thank you for going through this uh, perfect classical example where we start on C natural and go up 12 perfect fifths so we get to B sharp and B sharp is 24 cents sharper and I'm often asked when we shift through the keys like that don't we shift out of tune compared to the piano or to compare to a symphony orchestra if we played with a piano and we played in B sharp major surely it would be too sharp and we, our ears would make us adjust but since C sharp is the key that we usually use B sharp in because it's the leading tone to C sharp. Then we use B sharp all the time and it never lines up perfectly with the piano. So it, as a leading tone, it doesn't clash with the harmony. And we have two very beautiful examples from the Rococo and the fourth variation where we use a B sharp as a leading tone to C sharp. Can you show that around? And then the example from the Schumann concerto, where we also use the C sharp. Yes, that's a fingering that when I started with Leonard Rose, that's a fingering I learned actually at that time. At that time, he was just saying, yes, D flat and C sharp is not the same pitch. And that's why he uses that uh, fingering there. Since then, after I studied all of this, I really understand why. But the most important thing is, it sounds good to the ear. Thank you so much. The second kind of comma is called the syntonic comma. This is the secret to understanding how we move between Pythagorean melodic tuning and just harmonic tuning. So to recap, the Pythagorean and the syntonic commas are used in distinctly different ways. The Pythagorean comma is about the enharmonic notes, the different pitches, the 24 cent differential to any enharmonic note. This will lend more interest to any melodic passage. But the syntonic comma is, in its essence, a 22 cent difference between Pythagorean and just intervals, between any of those intervals. So let's focus in on the major third. A Pythagorean major third is larger, 408 cents. A just major third is smaller, 386 cents. 
we subtract those two numbers and that's how we arrive at 22 cents. But what exactly does 22 cents sound like? Can we hear the difference in any given passage? Here we're going to hear Brandon Cho play some double stops by using just intonation and then he's going to play a scale using Pythagorean intonation. The major thirds that he is going to use is F sharp and D. Now you may not have noticed anything different but indeed he has moved his second finger from a low F sharp to a higher F sharp. We'll have another chance to listen to it. In this next passage, we're going to hear a minor third. So in just intonation, a minor third is larger. It's 316 cents. And then he's going to play that minor third in a melodic sense again in a scale. These two notes that he's going to play is F natural and D. So what we're going to do is play both examples again and if you're having trouble hearing the difference, try to visually look at his second finger. We'll start again with a major third. So this 22 cent interval is small, but really important in string intonation, as it is frequently used to shift from the horizontal melodic Pythagorean tuning to a vertical just tuning. And you can switch back and forth as you like. We're going to now try to have you hear what 22 cents sounds like by using glissando. So in this next video, we're going to use the notation that you see behind me. We're going to first find the Pythagorean E. So we're gonna use that harmonic on the A string. We're gonna match that E down an octave to play it against an open string. Again, because it's the best control we have. And then in the second measure, you see that we're going to find the just E harmonic that exists on the C string. We're gonna bring it up an octave using our vertical pitch memory and then play that E against the open G. And then we're going to play both of those double stops and hopefully you'll hear the syntonic comma. So now we're going to move into a minor third. We are going to find the Pythagorean F as a minor third from D, also generated from perfect fifths. This F is going to sound out of tune against the open A. We must move that F 22 cents higher for just intonation. The minor third against the D is wider at 316 cents. 
and 386 cents against the open A. So you can hear that a 22 cent glissando is, is quite drastic and it covers a good distance on the fingerboard. But this is how we jump from one system to the next by use of these two different kinds of commas. <laughs> 